Hey everyone, so I've been spending the last month doing a complete renovation of my minivan, so it's time to do yet another tour video. Up until now, I've just had a temporary setup that was removable, and I could revert it back into a passenger van if I ever wanted. But now I've crossed the point of no return, and it's now officially a camper van. This isn't your typical hashtag van life conversion. I won't be spending any time at the beach taking half-naked selfies. This is primarily a stealth camper for city dwelling, saving rent money, and possibly some traveling. It blends in pretty good, but you might notice there are a few telltale signs that someone might be living inside. The first is the 100 watt solar panel on the roof. On a day like this, it usually provides around 2 to 3 amps. That's with the same amperage of what my 5 kilowatt diesel heater uses at full power. What I might have to do is add a second 100 watt panel to help get me through the winter weather. And when the summer comes, a second panel will give me a good spot to hide a roof vent beneath. Right now the diesel heater is at full power and I don't think the noise level is too noticeable. At low setting it gets a lot quieter. Plus in the city the background noise of traffic will probably drown it out altogether. I have the air intake tucked up under the bumper where it's protected from the elements. I have the 10 liter diesel tank here in the driver's side where it's easy to fill up and I don't notice any smells inside from the fumes. I made a little insulated box for the fuel pump but you can still hear it ticking away there. I suspended the pump from the hose to reduce the vibrations like people have recommended, so it's a lot quieter than it was before, but still kind of annoying to listen to. The passenger side is my garage and electrical area. I went with an 85 amp hour deep cycle battery. The wiring aspect was overwhelming at first, but uh, it was a lot easier once I started breaking it down into pieces and thinking it over. The hardest part was sourcing all the electrical components. I'd find one part here, another there, but Princess Auto seemed to have the most in one place. And the main reason I designed it like this was to fit my fat bike in there. And it fits perfectly with the wheels on and everything, but the passenger side door is my favorite access point, so I might have to take the wheels off to save some space. So I've got a little bit of room here under the back hatch for storage. I've got the diesel heater tucked into the back corner there. But you guys probably want to see the interior, so let's take a look. So basically the first thing I did after stripping out some of the interior pieces was put down a 4x8 sheet of plywood, half inch thick. It slid in perfectly between the rear wheel wells. I just had to notch out a piece to go around the driver's seat. And later on I added some pieces onto the side in front of it just to fill it out here. And I've heard of people having issues uh, getting seat belt alarms and things like that when they remove the passenger seat. I was getting an airbag alarm. I just had to take all the sensors out of the seat and plug it back into the harness and it's all good now. And if you have a tape measure, grab it and you can play along. I'll give you the dimensions so you can get an idea of how small it is in here. Alright, so how wide is the entrance to my living area? Not even 14 inches. And how tall is my little doorway? 41 and a quarter plus 2 and a half, 43.75 inches tall. I tried to make the most out of every little area to maximize the storage space. I've got three drawers under my bed, a little, little storage bin here. I was originally going to go with a, an actual door. But I decided to go with a curtain instead. That works pretty good. So I managed to reuse the same mattresses as what I was using before on my slide out bed. Actually everything got reused. All that wood. I took it all apart. And everything got repurposed into this build. Up here this is a dirty laundry slot. I can open it up. Uh, a couple more shelves up here. And that's the laptop holder I was using before. So I'm not quite moved in yet. I still have to stock it up in here. But I can remove these window covers if I want to and let some extra sunlight in. I have the controller for the diesel heater up there. And the visibility is actually pretty good. I can still use my rear view mirror. But I think I'm going to use this area in the summer for a little sprout garden. And down here I have my cooler and 500 watt inverter. And there's the heater vent. I originally had it pointing straight out towards the cooler, but the heat that comes out of there is pretty extreme. It's almost enough to melt the plastic. If I turned it on right now, it would start defrosting the front windshield. But anyways, here's the kitchen area. And the solar charge controller. Not getting a whole lot of amperage right now in the middle of a snowstorm. I have a carbon monoxide detector. This is the light switch. So I see a lot of people have little sinks in their van kitchens, uh, but I seem to get by fine with that one. I have a system here of clean water and wastewater, 
and it's easy to empty and refill those on a daily basis. Since I'm a city dweller, it's easy to find a water fountain or a bathroom 24 hours a day. So I also don't have a toilet in here. Uh, over the last five months, I've never needed one, so it's not really a concern. Yeah, that's right. I, <laughs> I haven't gone to the bathroom in five months, so maybe I should see a doctor soon. So I originally planned on putting a ceiling across the whole thing, but it turned out I needed some extra headroom here, so I left this part open. I'll probably put a roof vent in there eventually. I just activated stealth mode. I've got all the curtains closed. And from outside, you have to look really close to be able to tell their lights on in here. And the way I position the lights, just so that I can see inside my cooler and also inside my drawers. All right, the next measurement. Get your tape measure ready. Floor to ceiling. About 46 inches. So I can sit like this if I'm eating a meal or on the laptop or whatever. And if I want to relax, I can kind of stretch out like this. So part of the original plan was to have this as a fully insulated enclosure. But once I started measuring it out and to have an adequate amount of insulation to make a difference, I would have lost way too much room. So I decided to go without. But uh, the heater is really powerful and seems to compensate for that. One last thing I want to show you guys. If I ever have a problem with the diesel heater, I can get at it through here and fix it or replace it. Do whatever is necessary. Alright, so I think that's just about everything. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks for watching and thanks to Patreon supporters. Hopefully the next time we talk, I'll be living full time out of this van. So I'll let you know how everything's going. So I'll talk to you then.